Good morning, folks, and welcome back to the plot. There is only one job, proper job, that I have to do this morning, and that is this. That's it, that's all I'm here to do. <laughs> I just wanted to talk to you today. There's a few updates, and I just thought I'd kind of talk about this morning routine that I'm in at the moment a little bit. The first thing that I do every morning well, that's have a coffee, but then the next thing, I jump on my bike and I come down and I open both of the greenhouses. Now, I spoke a lot about kind of greenhouse ventilation and getting the kind of automation set up. So in theory, I don't really have to do this, but I just kind of want to talk a little bit about why. And to be honest, the, the main reason is the weather. Uh, if you hadn't noticed, we've had some really cold nights coming into June. It's June now already. And um, normally by June, those overnight temperatures are way, way above 10 degrees. We always recommend that you don't bring out your chili plants or your tender things, tomatoes, until those nighttime temperatures are over 10 degrees. And for me on the south coast, that's normally around the start or the middle of May. We're into June now and it's still really, really cold. At night I've just cycled up, it's about seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Been wearing a jacket because it's that cold in the morning still. And so that's honestly kind of the main thing that's made me start doing this new routine, but I could, I could leave them open, everything would be okay. But the main reason I'm doing it is basically for my own mental health. I find if I've shut the greenhouses completely, I have to get up in the morning quite early and I have to come and open them. I've got my old bike out, it's like this raggedy old thing that I've had for over a decade. And uh, every morning for the past two weeks, I've been cycling up and now that everything is full, in the greenhouses, they really do feel just like a happy place. So I cycle up, it's really quick, like 10 minutes max, and then I just spend maybe kind of 15, 20 minutes every morning in my greenhouses, just pottering around, making sure everything is watered, and it is absolute bliss. I tell you what, um, all the videos recently have been quite focused, there's lots going on, and I just wanted to make another one like this. It just kind of highlights the the joy and contentment around just gardening and having your greenhouses full to bursting with life. Coming in here every morning, in particular, it's the chilies that do bring me happiness. But just coming in here and spending a little bit of time, just really admiring everything you've done and the work that you've done to get to this stage of the year. Oh, it's just wonderful. It really does kind of set me up for the rest of the day. And Yesterday I was having a pretty bad one, a really bad one to be honest. And that is because of hay fever. Uh, I mentioned this recently, but this year has been the worst hay fever I've had. You can hear it a little bit this morning. I'm not tip top. And yesterday I was just, I had so many plans for the garden. I wanted to spend a really long time getting loads of stuff done. And I just, I couldn't, you know, I, I really couldn't. I had to shut myself inside, <laughs> just try and avoid the pollen. And uh, it's pretty demoralizing, to be honest. Um, something I've struggled with for a really long time. I used to work on nature reserves. If you don't know this about me, I used to work in con conservation and wildlife management and that kind of thing. I had to stop doing it because in spring and summer, I was just a wreck. Um, I wasn't enjoying it. You end up becoming like stressed and anxious about like having to go outside because you know what's going to happen. And um, I've never really found anything that can, can deal with it. I've had everything that you can in terms of both herbal, herbal remedies and over-the-counter stuff. I'm on the strongest antihistamines you can get. And sometimes it's bearable and sometimes it really just is not. So today I wanted to yeah, just highlight how much I'm loving the greenhouses now that they're full. And also, I don't think I said this at the start. Like, that's the other thing about hay fever. I end up with like massive brain fog brain doesn't quite operate fully quite difficult you know at work but um the other thing there's just loads of things i've forgotten to show you in recent videos i was making a little note this morning so let's first just have a little look in this tomato greenhouse because oh my goodness i love it look at it look at it in all its glory um oh it's just amazing i do there's lots to do you know there's lots to do i'm not focused on that today uh, there will be time to do it when it needs doing, there's nothing, you know, screaming urgent. I think the sweet corn is probably the most urgent thing, but just oh, the appreciation. Someone left me a pumpkin the other day, which is very kind. I'm gonna put that on the third plot. Um, and look at this, the honey plus cucumbers coming kind of thick and fast now. There's a few on that plant, but just oh, 
all of these tomatoes. They're looking really healthy. I was really concerned about the watering in here, but I think it's gone okay. There's some late season brassicas as well that will go into the bed pretty soon. <laughs> you can see, I do like to just cram as much in the greenhouses as possible. And at the back, my monster Dorset Naga just sat quietly biding its time, I'm sure putting on lots of root growth and in time we'll see it explode, but I just... This time of year, after May, you know, I did that video about the garden grind in May and how that is probably the most important month. Well, now it's June and now it's time to take your foot off the pedal a little bit. Once you've got a lot of these kind of summer plants in their final positions, I find you can really just relax and start to enjoy. You can hear the re <laughs> that's relief in my voice because May this year has been really, really busy. Um, I did kind of want to mention Steve in this one. We, we heard from his, uh, his widow Anne the other day and she wanted us to pass on uh, a really kind of heartfelt thank you for all the messages on Tony's video, on Steve's last video, on my videos. Um, I think Anne has seen most of those and was really quite touched. She has asked for, there's been a few questions about kind of donations or that kind of thing and Anne has asked for nothing, they don't want anything for flowers or for the funeral or anything like that, but um, any kind of cancer charities, um, especially Macmillan, Macmillan nurses, um, I think they would really appreciate a donation in Steve's name. Um, something we're all still kind of coming to terms with a little bit. It's funny the things that spark your memory, <laughs> in particular for me, there's, um, Steve recommended some twine. <laughs> Such a silly little thing, let me get it. It's, it's weird, the little things that will set you off and uh, remind you of people once they're gone, fortunately. <laughs> my, my eyes have already gone because of the hay fever, so I can talk about this. But this twine is flipping amazing. It's incredible, it's like, I'll put a link in the description, but Steve recommended this when I asked. And every time I'm stringing things up, it just kind of, you know, it brings a smile. It's like a warm memory. I think a lot of people have a lot of those about Steve. So uh, yeah, anyway. One of the forgotten things uh, that I keep just kind of leaving out and forgetting to mention is my blackberry, which is kind of in a bit of a weird place under this apple tree and you can see it's dying for a weed. But honestly, I thought it was dead. <laughs> I thought it was completely dead. And just a week or two ago, it sprung into life. It's full of flowers. It's got lots of little fruit on it. I really, I cannot believe it. It looked so, so sickly, so poorly. Um, it's been kind of badly pruned by uh, <coughs> cough, cough, a neighbor. Um, and uh, yeah, I, to be honest, it's looked like it's on its last legs, but now it's going for it. I think maybe it's just a bit of a later season blackberry than I, uh, I was kind of ready for quite late, lovely thornless variety and super, super sweet. I'm not even convinced it's a blackberry because they are so sweet and nice. I've tried to propagate a few cuttings from here and there is one still surviving down here, but taking a long time. So hey, that's, that's nice. The sweet peas, oh, look at these. I just strung those up yesterday. So they're looking much, much nicer too. And I can't believe it, but loads of videos have gone by where I've forgotten to mention this, which is my parsnip bed. Let me get the netting off and we'll have a look. I've not been very good at weeding this. That's one of the things I find about uh, netting. One of the reasons I don't, I don't really use it unless I have to. This is netted for the foxes. If you missed uh, the tour where I spoke about this, I'll link it. And uh, yeah, I find as soon as I put netting on something, it's just one tiny little extra step to weeding. You know, weeding is, is really easy when you can just, you see the weeds, you kneel down and you pull them up. It's simple, but for some reason, just adding the, the step of having to faff around with netting, even if it's just, you know, rolling it back like I've done there and it takes two seconds, it just makes me less likely to do it. Um, and so I've been a bit neglectful in here. Just cooch grass coming through, so nothing too dramatic, but uh, kind of a mixed success in here, I guess. If you don't know, this year Potty Mouth Garden Club are running a bit of a parsnip competition and the rules were basically no funny business, okay? No growing in like extra long tubes or sand or anything, you know, just stick your seeds in the ground. You can preach it them, that was allowed. Um, but you know, just see who can get the best parsnip, the longest best parsnip from growing in the ground. And remarkably, I have had germination, which was a nice surprise because 
you know, my luck with carrots and root veg germinating from direct sowing is not good. But I've seen this morning on Discord some people pass posting their parsnips and they are massive already. <laughs> I've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven that have germinated in here, seven little clumps. And I did do a line along here. Or well, they're not lines, I did sort of spaced out. And uh, the ones closest on this side just haven't germinated. And I did do two lines of spinach in here, which kind of germinated and then just immediately died, which, <laughs> which had me a bit concerned. But having a look at some of the parsnips today, I'm slightly encouraged. They're doing better than I thought. Maybe not full coverage of the bed. Uh, there's definitely a few gaps, <laughs> but you know, most of them are still tiny, like this one. But you know, it's encouraging, it's fine. I'm gonna put the netting back on and we're gonna have patience and see what these guys do. But yeah, I just haven't shown these off in ages and ages. I've completely forgotten what else is on the list. <laughs> so I'm going back. Oh, look at this. My dad has been continuing to plug away at this mad strawberry bed. Uh, he's going at mulch as well, so it just looks so, so nice compared to, you know, that grass was all throughout this whole thing. But I was just going to mention, I have been up here just giving it a good mow. Uh, Thursday, I think this was, and I oh, just love Love just popping up to the plot and you know, when you've only got 20 minutes, being able to quickly mow with a, a mower is just, oh, it looks so much better, doesn't it? It kind of helps that next door's quite overgrown. <laughs> oh yeah, it, like, this is my absolute piece of crap bike. But it does the job, it's brakes still work. Gears, you know, it has one working gear, so that's fine. <laughs> yes, one of the other things I completely forgot to mention is in the chili greenhouse, so we <laughs> We come back. Right? This is what I mean. I'm so, so forgetful. Um, but you could see, hopefully you can see, anyway, there's a lot more space in here than there used to be. And that is because all of these are now on saucers, which is perfect for bottom watering. And I am planning on doing a video soon about chili pepper watering and feeding and what I do. So do be on the lookout for that, but that's just so much more space efficient. I wasn't 100% sure if it was gonna work, but I'm really, really pleased. Another thing, my cabbage patch, holy cow. In the last week, these cabbages have kind of transformed. They just were sat in the last plot tour. They did not look good at all, but they're really starting to put on growth now. And there's two things I've done. One is a seaweed feed in this bed. The ones over here not perking up quite so quickly but I'm still hopeful. Those red cabbage definitely look like they're putting on growth. But yeah, seaweed feed and also neem oil. And since doing a neem oil drench, once again, link in the description, uh, I've really noticed a reduction in the amount of flea beetle damage. So like, look at this, look at that big leaf on the right there. Not long ago, that would have been completely decimated by flea beetles and it would have looked like this leaf here. So I think the neem oil has actually helped a little bit with flea beetle and I was never sure if it was going to do that, but I think it has. And this one looking a bit better too after a seaweed feed. The other thing I wanted to show everyone is the third plot. And, you know, <laughs> make up your own mind about whether or not this looks good. Uh, I've, I've not done much. I've not done too much. I've just tried to keep it so that, you know, when my, when my aunt and uncle do come back and they're ready, it's not a completely daunting task taking this on. If it's your only allotment, then it's, uh, it's not so bad, is it? The French beans are doing, uh, well, <laughs> the ones that were transplanted are looking pretty sickly. That one's got a bean on it already, which is uh, not great. So these are the cobra. And I, I incorrectly in my last plot tour said the, uh, the cobra <laughs> were on, on my allotment, but no, that's the Kalima, the Kalima, the dwarf. And in here, I've got some Borlotti as well, which were direct sown. And they have come up amazing. Really, really happy with that. So hopefully the direct sown ones will kind of romp away and look much better than those transplanted ones. I think some of the transplanted ones might still come up. Um, I've not, <laughs> maybe I should have like planted them closer to the canes to actually tie them up. But you know, we're learning, never done, never done climbing beans before. But uh, what I have done, I just came on here the other day and gave it another mow. And if you remember, this area over here was kind of waist high grass by the time I got to it. And I've, I brought the strimmer up, gave that a really good strim, and then went over it with the mower to really kind of knock everything back a little bit. So it's still looking a bit like a blank slate. I've got a pumpkin. I do want to put in one of these beds and some spare squash. So they are still going to go in. and Hopefully we'll get some things growing 
in these three beds. The spuds are still going, but everyone did very sensibly say, don't overdo it, JB. You've got enough on your plate already. And to be fair, I'm really glad that people did say that in the comments because it's made me feel a lot better about not doing more on this one. It's one of those things you, you want to you want to really hit something hard, go really ambitious, and you have a vision that in three or four weeks, I'm going to have this all cleared and planted up with stuff. And uh, sometimes you just need to acknowledge what, what is unrealistic and just kind of be content with doing what you can. And uh, this year I've been, it's all about prioritization. You know, prioritize, 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 get the things that need to go in the ground most in the ground or potted up. And that's really worked. That's really worked quite well for me, I think. Just a few little updates on things I keep forgetting to show you um, that I you know, couldn't really squeeze into another video, but I just wanted to highlight a little bit of garden choy and that kind of routine I'm in at the moment, just coming in to the allotment in the mornings and uh, it's really doing wonders for me. I'm just looking at that greenhouse. There are, there are some things that need to go out. So haven't got much time today. It's literally just up for the morning, open things up, and then I've got a day doing lots of boring adult stuff. I might be back in the evening. Thank you ever so much for joining me. An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Pepper tier patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Michael, Mel, Andrew, Denise, Socks, and Craig. I got it. I'm really sorry I forgot you last time, Denise, but thanks again, everyone, and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one.